Hello and welcome to this series on digifying a shoe last and a foot. In this series we're going to look at how you can 3D scan in either a foot or a shoe last, manipulate the data that's gathered and then export it in a format that can either be printed or machined. In order to do this we're going to need to download a couple of pieces of free software. The first piece of software is Mesh Mixer. This is where we're going to import the 3D scan data we're going to adapt it and smooth it and we're going to generate a file format called an STL. Mesh Mixer can currently be downloaded for free from www.meshmixer.com and a link will be in the description below this video. The second piece of software we're going to download is actually Ultimaker's Cura. This is a 3D printing bit of software but it has some really useful tools in it that will help you align your scan and flatten it in order to machine it out. That software can be found from Ultimaker.com and again a link is in the description below. Welcome to Mesh Mixer. What we have here is a scan of a last from the handheld scanner. Now what you can see when you open it up in Mesh Mixer is that we actually have a few different objects, a few different artifacts that are floating around. So we've obviously got the shoe last, the stand we placed it on and actually what was the arms of the chair that the model was on. In order to manipulate the screen as I'm doing, I'm using my left click to select items, the centre scroll wheel of the mouse or your centre button if pressed allows you to move the object around and the scroll wheel allows for zooming and the right click allows me to rotate around this centre origin. Because this isn't particularly a clean scan the first thing that I'm going to want to do is to separate out these three bodies and then delete this longer body and this rounder body here. So in order to separate the bodies I'm going to come over to edit. This will open the editing menu for the OBJ file we've brought in and I'm going to click on separate shells. What this does is it opens up the object browser which I can tag to this side of the window and you'll see there's three bodies in it. When I click on each shell, what you'll see is it highlights the shell. I want to keep shell three, so I want to delete shells one and two. Using shift, I can select both shells and I can delete them. I won't be able to do anything to this object until I select it in the object browser. When it's selected, you'll see it's this lighter shade of gray. And what I'm gonna do is just move it centrally. The next thing I'm going to have to do is remove this base from the last so that I can start working with the last. In order to do this I'm actually going to use this cube in the top right hand corner. The reason I'm using this is that it gives me a flat view. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at the back of the model completely perpendicular to it. Again, I'm going to go into edit and I'm actually going to select transform. And what I'm going to want to do is rotate the model so it's flat. As you can see, if I select any part on this triangle here, I can rotate the model. Now, if I go out a bit, you'll see I have this wheel and this wheel will snap to five degree increments. 10 degrees looks about right, so I'm going to release and I'm going to accept the change. This now has squared up, you could say, the view of this last in the workspace within the software. What I'm then going to want to use is a plane cut. And what a plane cut does is it deletes half the model across what is this plane that you can see here. So if I go back to that original view, that's the plane. Everything below the plane is being removed. If the plane for some reason is on the wrong side of your model, click this arrow and it will reverse the direction of cut. The reason we squared up our shoe is so that I can raise this up until we start touching our model. It's going to rotate around and have a look and as you can see I'm removing quite a bit of the base of the model. So what I'm just going to do is drag it down slightly which is the blue arrow just until we get the initial part of getting the shoe flat. I'm going to spin it around quickly and check I've not taken too much off the heel because we know this model isn't completely flat and at this point I'm going to check that I'm cutting and discarding the lower half 
and I've got a remeshed fill. What that means is it's going to skim the bottom of the model. I'm going to accept that and now I have a shoe that looks a little bit like a last. From this point what I'm going to do is prepare it for CNCing. So we're going to want to CNC this out to check the accuracy. In order to do that I'm going to do a second plane cut but what I'm going to do with this plane cut is rotate the plane around through 90 degrees which is where this snapping wheel is really useful and I'm going to look as a top view. From this top view what I'm going to try to do is actually rotate the plane around until it goes roughly down the center line of my shoe which I think is about there. That looks quite good. There doesn't seem to be any particular over there doesn't seem to be any overhang on the toe box or the heel cup at this place. This time, however, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the cut type to slice and keep both halves, and I'm going to ask the fill type to be a remeshed fill. When I accept this cut, it doesn't look like it's done anything in the software. However, if we remember before we go to separate shells, we now have two halves of the model. Now what we're going to do with these halves of the model is look at each one individually. So hide one half by clicking the eyeball, select the other half by clicking this. Have a look at it. That's half our last to start with. So what I'm going to do is go up to file and then export. I'm going to want to export this as an STL so that it can be processed on the Roland CNC machines downstairs. Okay, so now that we've exported the two halves of the last, the left and the right, as STLs, what we're going to do is we're going to bring them into the Cura software. And I'm just doing that by clicking on them and opening them. The reason that we're doing this isn't necessarily because we're going to 3D print them, because as you can see, they're actually bigger than the print area. What we're actually doing this for is so that we can flatten out the models. Because when we scan the files, we scan them at a random angle, we then try to square them up within Mesh Mixer, and we then cut them flat. If we took them downstairs, the models would be at an odd angle. So what we need to do in this is actually use one of the features of Cura called Lay Flat and we will lay the model flat onto the build plate and save the file. When we have it this way, whichever machine we take it to, be that a CNC or a 3D printer, the model is flat, will align to the build plane and work perfectly first time. Using Cura, it's kind of a similar environment to what we found in Mesh Mixer. So holding down your right mouse button will allow you to scan around. The middle scroll wheel is zoom and pressing down the middle scroll wheel or middle button allows you to drag the area around. What you'll see is we have both halves of our last here and at a default we're in to move. And we can move the model by clicking on any one of these arrows and dragging it around. What I'm actually going to click on is I'm going to click on rotate and looking at my model here I'm going to grab this green wheel and I'm going to rotate it through 90 degrees. Again a bit like Mesh Mixer what you'll find here is that you have automatic snapping. Now this as you can see here isn't particularly flat however one of the things I can do in this software which I couldn't do in Mesh Mixer is go over to this icon and click lay flat. What this will then do is lay my model flat in the build area. You'll see it's still floating though in 3D space. So what I'm going to do is go back to move and on my Z axis, which is my blue vertical axis, I'm gonna change the value to zero. Now this model is flat, it's lay on the build plate and there's no gaps under it, it's ready to CNC. I can either do this with one of these halves of the last or both at the same time. And what I'm gonna do is both at the same time just to save a bit of time for when I take it downstairs to CNC. So again, I'm going to come over to rotate. I'm going to rotate it through 90 degrees, basically to get the model most of the way there. I'm then going to go to transform, and I'm going to change that Z value to zero. Now, if I zoom out a bit, 
and I look from above. A couple of the things I can do is I can use transform again on one of the models just to move them a bit closer to each other, get this file a bit smaller. I could tilt them in or perhaps stagger them this way. I'm not going to at this stage because I don't need to, but all I would need to do now is go into file. I'd go to export because if I go to save, Cure is going to want to save this as a G code file. And a G code file is a file that will write straight to the Automaker printer. So I want to export this and I want to export it as an STL again. Either type doesn't matter, but in this case, we're going to go for an ASC2. I'm going to call it both lasts. So I'm going to call it flat lasts. And it's ready to save, it's ready to export, and from there I can take it down to the Rolands and get these machined. Thank you for watching this video. Please follow along in our next video where we're going to process a scan of a foot as opposed to a scan of a last, and then hopefully we're going to move on to machine them.